Today's topic, collection detection. Welcome to another episode of Table Scraps, in which we present a topic related to tabletop gaming and then have a brief conversation about it with the live audience. Let's not waste any more time listening to this weird intro music. Let's get right into today's discussion. And hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Table Scraps, the live streaming show where I, along with the live YouTube chat audience, discuss a topic about tabletop gaming and then share a few chats back and forth together on that topic. Today, we are going to be answering a question that was brought to us by a viewer, as always, and that viewer is going to be Eddie Moon, who says, Tell us about the times that you had to sneak a game into your collection to avoid explaining to your significant other why you had brought home yet another game. And this one may be a little difficult to, to talk about here, because um, I can see where you're going with your question there, Eddie. And I'm hoping that the interaction with the live chat uh, will lead to some fun tongue-in-cheek discourse. But while I was working on my own answer to this question, um, I tried coming up with some witty, funny stories about it. Um, but this particular question actually has some history with my wife and I and, and everything, at, at risk of going in a completely different direction than was originally uh, expected with an answer to this question, here's, here's the answer I have to give. Dogs are barking, that's awesome. So and anyone who has watched the Top 100 series that I did on the Dice Towers channel last summer heard me describe my stepfather. Essentially, if, if you haven't seen it, the, the quick recap is that uh, you know, there's that game that you always say, you know, well, if, if someone was to play you in a movie, who would play you in a movie? And um, for my stepfather, I think it's a cross between uh, Fred Flintstone and Homer Simpson. So one of the things that my older brother and sister and I um, kind of had to deal with growing up was any time that we went out and uh, came home with something new, a new toy or a new gadget or whatever, like there would be an argument. Um, essentially, why did you spend your money on that? Uh, that was a waste of money. And it would lead to like a big family argument for the rest of the day. So we developed a defense mechanism, a survival mechanism for that. Um, we got into the habit of if you ever came home with a new toy or gadget or whatever, what you would do is you would bring it home and you would hide it in your room. And then over the course of the next few days or the next few weeks, you would maybe kind of unhide it, you know, put it in with the mix of your stuff, but still kind of keep it quiet. And then after a while longer, you know, then you just use it, you know, out in the open or whatever. And then when the question inevitably came up of, hey, when did you get that thing? When did you spend your money on that? You could reply honestly with this? Oh, I've had this for weeks. And that would kill the conflict right then and there. So habits like that easily become ingrained into you know, your regular routine and the way that you live your life. Now, when my wife and I uh, first got married, of course, then you know, those that those habits were still there. And I remember going to the store and buying a CD and instantly feeling guilty about it. Going, oh no, I spent some of our money on this CD without asking my wife about it or telling her, you know, there's, there's going to be trouble. So I remember, you know, hiding it and going through that whole routine, letting it you know, be hidden and then just kind of stuck into the CD collection for a while and then playing it while she was around eventually. And when she's like, hey, when did you get this CD? You know, oh, I've had this for weeks. Well, sure enough, you know, it led to an argument. But not in the way I expected. Uh, she, she stopped and it's like, no, something's not right here. And, and so I, you know, confessed the situation and the backstory to her. And she just looked at me and she said, you, we're a team. You don't have to do that anymore. In fact, I don't want you to. If you want a CD or you want a board game or you want something else, just tell me. Um, we'll figure it out. And if it's, we'll make it work. And... It was a really big turning point, you know, in a lot of different aspects of my life. Even so, there have still been times that uh, I slip and I'll get really guilty about something and, and I will do that. But overall, um, that's the environment, the healthy environment that she has helped foster and restore 
uh, in our relationship. So why am I bothering to share this? Um, well, because like I said, um, of all the different ways that I could think to answer your question, Eddie, um, that was the one that kept coming up. That's the only way of answering your question that felt right in my gut. So that's the story here from Captain Bringdown. Uh, let's see if we can restore some levity back to the room by going over to the YouTube chat. Let's start with a comment by Ethan, who says, a friend had some games hidden behind something else on his calyx shelves that his wife found when pulling out the game in front to play. He got in trouble for it, but only briefly. Uh, <laughs> that seems to be, you know, the obvious uh, solution. If you have the IKEA calyx shelves that we as board gamers uh, love so very, very much, you, you, there are they are usually deep enough that you can hide a game behind your other games. But I'm not even tempted by that tactic because I would forget about the games. All right, let's continue on to the next comment. Kabuki says, I have never hit a game coming into the house, but I did once fib about how much I spent on a game. War of the Ring Anniversary Edition came and my boyfriend asked how much I spent on it. I even felt crazy for spending so much, so I fibbed and told him it cost, I don't know, $150 cheaper than it actually was. I, I can see that. I, I can totally see that. that. That's one of the reasons why when I've... Um, when I'm shopping around for a game, uh, even if it's not the location that I end up purchasing it from, if I find it really cheap online and I want to show someone, hey, I want to get this game, I'll usually show them the copy of the webpage that has it the cheapest price that I have found. Toyota Wolf says, <clears throat> um, well, any Kickstarter is something that I usually sneak into my collection. However, Chaz's advice of setting up an entertainment budget, uh, I hope, will avoid this. But really, Kickstarter games don't show up when the money is spent. Kickstarter seems to be this vicious little anomaly, doesn't it? Especially with the delay between paying and getting the game. It can be really difficult sometimes to legitimize budgeting for a Kickstarter game, or it can end up being extra thing that sneaks into your budget because it's like, oh, I gotta get this thing within the next few weeks, but it's gonna show up next month. So do I take the money out of this month's entertainment budget or the entertainment budget of when it would show up? And inevitably, if I choose to take the funds out of the entertainment budget of when it would arrive, by the time it arrives, I forget or have moved on. So Kickstarter is like expert mode when it comes to budgeting for your game collection, isn't it? Here's a comment from Zachary who says, there is no game shame in our house. Anytime I get a new game, I immediately show it to my wife to gauge her level of interest. Hey, that's awesome. I like that approach and that's neat that it's like not only no shame, but it's like, hey, I want to know your level of interest because right off the bat, your spouse is being included, which will not only increase the likelihood of playing the game, but also kind of makes it a special experience. So Zachary, I like that approach very much. Zachary, I think every episode, there's one nugget of wisdom that you teach me. So I'm going to soak, soak that knowledge in um, and I'm going to let you continue to be my board gaming sage. Let's continue on with Trevin, who says... Amazon has quote unquote add-on items that are cheaper than normal, but to get them, you have to order $25 of stuff. So I've added a small game to hit that threshold, which I feel justifies the order. There was no trickier, witty idea that mankind has come up with than the free shipping threshold. I only want to buy $30 in games, but if I spend a hundred, I'll get free shipping. Mm. I do it all the time. I've gotten to the habit now where I save up to, uh, you know, purchase in large chunks to get that free shipping uh, because, you know, over the course of the year, that's uh, that's probably a couple hundred dollars at least in shipping that you end up saving, which goes towards more products. So you do end up getting more stuff if you can just be patient to do that. But, oh, yes, Trevin, the th free shipping threshold stuff, that uh, is something that totally was designed to manipulate board gamers and tap into our min-max mentality. I, I totally believe that. Gil mentions, I actually do it more often than I should. My Ikea shelf still goes unnoticed since my wife doesn't go there very often. But now she takes pictures and compares them every couple of months. Gil, she's on to you. The board games are coming from inside the house. 
Gil, I wish you the best of luck. And, and seriously, though, I hope it's something that doesn't cause friction between you and your spouse. Uh, I am hope it's something that uh, at most is just a fun anecdote that you two can kind of share together. Next, we have a comment from Niftali, who says, I decided to avoid Kickstarter just all together and get games that are, you know, published, keeps me in budget, and ensures that I invest in a good game. You know what? I think that that has merit. And I think I've mentioned before that uh, I do back things on Kickstarter, but I limit myself to one or two Kickstarters a year that I back for pretty much that exact same reason there, Niftali. Um, it, it avoids it, the confusion, the budgetary things, and it's also, the games are published. Here they are. I'm not gonna have to worry about that aspect. So I can totally get behind your way of thinking there. And like I said, I, I think it has merit. And our last question here is gonna come from Ethan, who says, speaking for myself, my wife and I are both heavily in the hobby. So we both buy about equally, uh, probably her more than me actually. So, and I think it helps that it's a mutual passion. Well, there you go. Yes, I, I agree. And what's really neat is um, that mutual passion between you and your spouse. When you guys can find something like that that you share, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so that can be neat. Sometimes if you are wanting to find more overlap with your spouse to make it more of a mutual thing, keep in mind that there might be different aspects, different layers to the hobby that they may be more interested in than us. And that can actually lead to whole new revelations and whole new overlaps um, in, the, in the interest in the hobby. So anyway, admittedly, this episode came out a little more differently than I think um, Eddie, who asked the question originally intended, but you know what? It led to an interesting discussion and hopefully the discussion won't end here. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or life experiences on this topic, let us know in the comments below this video or over on our Facebook and Twitter page where we can continue the conversations about that and other topics that we discuss over there. Additionally, before we go, I just want to remind everybody that this episode was made possible by the contributions to the Pod Pledge fundraiser for Pair of Dice Paradise. All the support that we're getting over there on that page is what's making episodes like this possible to do. So thank you everyone, and until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, who, along with the YouTube live streaming chat, has been serving up some table scraps. Talk to you again soon. For to uh, to satiate my own feeling of guilt that that I have, uh, satiate was not the right word there, but um, I can't think of the word because um, I'm having it's Monday and having anti-word stuff. <laughs> See, <laughs> apparently I am. Chat snippet, we like to get them chat snippets. We're getting a chat snippet now from Toyota Wolf.